Hello and welcome to Glass Nerd Academy. Today we're looking at a Bitcoin metric called Spent Output Profit Ratio, which is often abbreviated to the term SOPA. What SOPA provides is an indication of the amount of profit, loss, or net neutral spending that's going on on chain, and it really gives us an insight into the aggregate sentiment of both market structure in bulls, bears, and everything in between. So what we'll look at in this session is an overview of the spent output profit ratio metric and what the different inputs are that actually go into its construction. We'll look at the different variations of SOPR and look how we consider it in both bullish and bearish market structures. And then we'll use Glassnode Studio to really visualize some of the trends and see how we use this tool in practice. So the way that we construct the SOPA metric is we consider the fiat value of all of the coins that were spent on a particular day and we compare that to the fiat value when all of those coins were last moved on chain. So what this provides is an aggregate view on the magnitude of profit or loss that was realized on any particular day. And we can also use this metric to look at trends. Are we seeing an increasing number of coins being spent realizing profits? Is the market moving into more bearish territory where coins are being moved at a loss? And are we seeing changes in the overall supply dynamics where we're seeing illiquid coins that are in profit coming back into circulation as they sell into market strength? Or are we seeing an overall market capitulation and panic selling as people sell their coins at a loss? So some key values for SOPA. When SOPA is equal to one, it means the market overall is net neutral. This can mean that the profits that are realized largely offset the losses, but it can also mean that conviction is returned. For example, in a bullish pullback, it means that profitable coins have stopped being spent and people are generally sitting waiting for the next move. When we have SOPA values that are greater than one, it indicates that profits are being realized and the higher the SOPA value is, the more of those profits are actually being realized. And conversely, when we have SOPA values that are less than one, it suggests that losses are being realized on chain and the deeper that that value falls below one, the larger the losses. And finally, Let's discuss the different variants of the spent output profit ratio. The first is our adjusted SOPA, which filters out all transactions that are younger than one hour, which generally represent intermediate hops between the origin and the eventual destination of coins. What this does is it provides a more economically meaningful view on the overall spending patterns, and thus provides us with an improved signal to the standard SOPA metric. The second variant is the short-term holder SOPA, which filters for coin holders that are younger than 155 days. It has a similar interpretation to the adjusted SOPA and the standard SOPA metric, although in this instance is capturing a subset of the market, people who've accumulated and moved their coins recently on chain. On a statistical basis, coins younger than 155 days are more likely to be re-spent in the event of volatility, and therefore it provides us insight into what's going on in this particular subset of the market. The final variant is our long-term holder SOPA, which filters for coins that are older than 155 days. Once a coin is older than 155 days, it's statistically less likely to be spent on chain, and in general this metric provides us a profit multiple that is being realized by these long-term investors. So now let's jump into Glassnode Studio and we'll have a look at the charts in a live setting. So here we are in Glassnode Studio, we're looking at the Bitcoin spent output profit ratio. I've applied a seven day moving average just to make some of the peaks easier to observe. And I've also zoomed into a bull market dynamic ranging from the end of the 2015 bear market right through to the 2017 macro peak. So there's three main observations related to SOPA and they all relate to the distance between the SOPR metric and the value of one, which is marked in black. Now during each individual bull market rally, we see a progressively higher set of peaks in the SOPA value. And what this indicates is that as price is rising, more profitable coins are spending and realizing those gains, and that's creating a new supply that's coming onto the market, which eventually results in a local top. Now, following a local top, we tend to see that the SOPA metric actually resets back down to or falls just below a value of one. Now, what this suggests is actually twofold. When it falls below one, it suggests that people who have purchased coins higher up, closer to the local top, are essentially spending their coins at a loss and potentially panic selling. And it also means that the holders with profitable coins are largely keeping their coins dormant. If they were to spend those profitable coins, the SOPA metric would actually then lift again. So it's suggesting that conviction is actually returning during major corrections. 
And the final observation in a bull market is that progressively, as the market rallies, we get more coins that are in larger profits and the potential height of these SOPA peaks actually continues to increase until at some point, the overall in incentive to sell becomes so great that the supply essentially overwhelms demand. And in the 2017 case, for example, we then had a major capitulation where lots of investors then sold down to the bottom and realized those losses. And this really signified a transition from a bullish market structure into a bearish market structure following a large distribution event and profits being realized. So now we'll flip over and look at more bearish market structure, looking at from the 2017 macro top right the way through to the 2019 peak here in June, July. And what we see is largely the inverse of what we had in the bull market, where as prices fall, more and more coins fall underwater and therefore realize losses on chain. Traders and investors who step in and buy the dips and then ride the bull market rallies return to profitability. And as those profitable coins are spent, it indicates that more supply is coming back onto the market and therefore the probability for a bear market reversal continues. And then following the major capitulation event, we get a very deep and extended period of time where most of the coins that are on the move are selling at a loss. And this largely represents the capitulation phase and the point when smart money investors are stepping in to accumulate those losing coins until we finally revert back into a period of profitability. 